Hey guys, it's John, welcome back. So today I'm gonna to go through how I made a financial independence calculator using React.js, local storage, and React hooks. This is a very basic application in order to calculate what age that you can retire. If you're into fire, or if you just wanna know when you can retire given how much you're investing, how old you currently are, etc. This is kind of a fun, simple way to learn more about React, how to handle uh, controlled components, how to handle forms, and how to utilize something simple like local storage and hooks to, to get a simple calculator up and running. Uh, but first, let me just show you what this thing looks like. So uh, as you can see, what this is gonna look like is just a simple uh, form calculator. Th this will you know, have certain defaults, but you can adjust as you want. So as you can see here, right now, we're uh, scheduled to retire at age 73. Uh, the target, target retirement amount is two million. Uh, this kind of does follow the FIRE rule of four, um, where basically it assumes that your net rate of return after you retire is about 4%. Um, and so if you divide 80,000 by 0.04, you'll get 2 million, but we can adjust this. So let's say uh, our post-retirement uh, rate of return, we want it to be eight. As you can see, then uh, our target retirement amount is less because we need less uh, of an initial amount to retire because we have higher investment returns. And you can see this just dynamically changes uh, the age and the target retirement amount as I adjust this rate of return. Uh, so the higher the rate of return, the less you need to retire, and then the um, younger you can retire. Uh, and you can see all of these, uh, the age and the target retirement amount uh, updates and re-renders and recalculates every time one of the form inputs changes. So if our regular contributions increases to 3,000, then we'll retire at age 60. Uh, if our current savings balance is uh, uh, less, or let's say it's actually more to make, it, make an actual difference here. So let's say we want 50,000, all right, we'll retire at 59, what about 500,000 is what we have right now. It just gets earlier. Um, and you can see if we start later, then we retire later. So it's a cool, it's a cool way to experiment with forms in React. Um, and this is the end result here, uh, but let's get started from scratch on how to actually build this. Okay, so as you can see here, we are starting from scratch. So um, I deleted all the stock stuff that the Create React app usually comes with. I, I basically pared down the app to just be the app component here. And so as you can see, we're just returning a single div with the fire calculator here. Um, and uh, we don't really have any CSS here, just a text align center, um, nothing fancy. I've kind of just stripped this down. So now that we are starting from scratch, um, let's start to put together uh, what we need for this calculator to work. Maybe it'll make sense to first start with some of the uh, HTML to see how we wanna structure the calculator. And then we can deal with um, how to handle the inputs. To start out with, we might want something like an H1 uh, just to kind of describe what this is. Um, so let's just say this is gonna be financial independence calculator. Um, so we'll start up there. And then we wanna have a section to basically describe what age we can retire, right? Um, so in this case, let's do an H2. Uh, let's call this, um, let's just say what we, what we said in the final product, which is uh, you can retire at age, and then we'll leave that blank for now, and we'll fill it in afterwards. Now we want to actually insert our form. Um, so I'm just gonna create a simple form here. We're gonna want to, at the, at the top, uh, we wanna have something that describes the target retirement amount. This doesn't actually, let me just put this up here. In, um, in this case, I'll just make this a simple div for now. I know that's not ideal, but uh, we'll just say target retirement amount and then we'll leave that blank. So we have that, and then now we wanna get started with our form. So for our form, we want to, first, we want them to enter, um, we want the user to enter how much expenses that they plan to have during retirement. Um, so let's make that the first input. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this in a label, uh, and I will just create an input here. I just want this to be a single close tag. And um, I'm gonna say the type is gonna be a number. Value for now, I'm gonna leave that out because we're gonna uh, use React to do that. Um, and we're also gonna put it on change afterwards, but for now, let's just put an input uh, as number. 
and we're going to label this uh, annual retirement expenses in today's dollars. Okay, so that's our first input. And then we are also gonna to want to have uh, another input for the age that we're starting at. So let me just, um, just copy and paste this. And we're gonna say current age here. Uh, it's also a number and we'll worry about the value and everything afterwards. Okay, we're gonna also want the current savings balance. We're gonna want um, how much we're actually contributing. Okay. And then we're gonna want the contribution frequency. So is this annual or monthly? And this is actually going to be a different type of input. We're gonna, we're gonna do a select a drop down for this. It's gonna make the most sense. So that way they can uh, choose between monthly or annually and we can control the value. Um, so let's create a uh, select input here. Um, and then let's create a couple of options. One is going to be monthly and then uh, the next is going to be annually. And we can go ahead and set the values there to monthly uh, and then annually. All right, so we have that here. Um, and this is looking pretty ugly. So, you know, we're gonna wanna have some basic CSS to clean that up in a second. Okay, and then we also want some fields for the rate, the rate of return that we're expecting pre and post retirement as well as the inflation. So let's create a, a section here uh, for advanced fields here. We'll label this with an H2, we'll just call this advanced. Um, and then wrap this in a label, we'll say first pre-retirement rate of return. Um, that's also going to be uh, a numeric input, so we can just bring this down here, copy that. And then this should be the same, we should also enter a post-retirement rate of return. and then inflation as well. Okay, so now we have this. And let's add some simple CSS just so it doesn't look just absolutely awful here. So let's think about how we wanna style this a little bit. Okay, so first let's give this form a class so we can uh, actually uh, style it in the CSS file. Um, so let's call this uh, class name fire calc form. Um, so let's start with that. And so let's go to the CSS file. And it, and it looks like obviously all these, these input fields are just right next to each other. And we wanna make them probably do something like display flex. So that way they're nice and they're organized as a column. Um, so in this case, let's, let's list our class here, file, fire calc form. We'll do display flex. Um, flex direction, column, align items, flex start, uh, is that way they're left aligned. Uh, and then let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's a little bit better. Um, it's not entirely great, but it's not terrible. Um, so we can work with that and then we're gonna continue to style this afterwards, um, make it look even better. Okay, so let's go back to uh, app.js. And now that we have the structure of what we want our form to look like, uh, let's start to handle some of the logic um, using React to handle the, the input values and, as, and also the calculations. In order to handle the values uh, in the form itself using React, uh, we're gonna use the use state and then the use effect React hooks. Now hooks are just functions that let you hook into React functionality. And so we're gonna use use state because use state uh, basically allows you to declare state variables. Um, so that way we can manage the state of the form itself as well as the state of our calculations. And then we're gonna use use effect uh, because we wanna perform some logic each time uh, uh, the DOM re-renders. So each time uh, React renders, in any of the values change in the form, um, we want to actually recalculate the retirement age and the target retirement amount based off of the new input values. 
So use effect will create a, a kind of a side effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and import those and then uh, describe in a little bit how to use them. So I'm gonna, up here, I'm gonna say, uh, first of all, we need to import React. Um, and then we're going to import the hooks that we mentioned from React. React. So now we can actually plug into uh, React functionality. Before we do anything, as you can see here, the first time that the, our calculator renders for a user, uh, there's not gonna be any values unless we set some initial values. So on the first render, we need to set initial values for the form if we want to have something for the user to look at and to start with, uh, and to just provide default values for our calculations. Um, so in order to do that, um, let's create some initial value variables. So first we're gonna decide if these values are saved on the client's web browser um, in local storage. Now, the reason I decided to use local storage for this is because, um, first of all, it's, we're not, for the sake of this, um, how simple this app really is, we're not passing state across a bunch of components. I have a single component, I'm just using app. Um, and, uh, and something like Redux or another state management tool would just be overkill in this scenario. Um, so for the sake of this demonstration, all we need is local storage. We just need uh, somewhere in the web browser to store our state. Um, and so that's why we're gonna use local storage. And so uh, also when, when the client or the user refreshes their browser or starts a new browser session, uh, it's annoying to have to re-enter all the values. And so we want the state to persist, uh, which is why using local storage is a great simple way to persist state across browser sessions. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna declare a bunch of variables for, this, for the state that we want and we're either going to use what's currently in local storage, or if this is the first render and nothing has been saved to local storage, we're going to set an initial value. So the way that we're gonna do that is, uh, let's start um, kind of in, in order of what we might see here for the most part. So let's start with uh, retirement age, because that's a, what we're going to see first. So in this case, uh, we're gonna create a variable, uh, just calling it initial retirement age. And we're gonna set that to um, local storage dot get item retirement age. Now local storage are basically key value pairs stored uh, in the browser. So um, we're going to get um, the value associated with the key retirement age. And if we don't have that, uh, we wanna set this to a default, let's say 100. So the other thing here is Local storage uh, stores the values as strings, and so we want this to be a number uh, for our calculations, otherwise JavaScript does really funky things mixing strings and numbers. So um, let's use the number constructor to do that. So uh, we're gonna say number, um, and we're just going to wrap what we have here. Okay, and so now we have an initial value, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the other values that we need here. This is gonna be their target retirement amount. Um, so that's the amount, obviously, that you see that somebody needs to retire. Um, after that, we're gonna to wanna to do uh, annual retirement expenses. Um, we're gonna to want to store the current age. We're gonna to want to store the current amount of savings. We're gonna to wanna to store the contributions. We're gonna to wanna to store the contribution frequency. Then the rate of return pre-retirement, the rate of return post-retirement, and then the inflation. And then I'm gonna update these. I should have done this as I, as I went, oh well. And then now I'm gonna set the initial values. So I'm just gonna say the initial retirement age is gonna be 100. Uh, I'm gonna say that target retirement is gonna be uh, zero in the beginning, zero expenses assumed. Uh, let's say on average the person would be 35. Um, current savings, let's say 10 grand. Uh, initial contributions, let's say 500 a month. Um, the contribution frequency here, let's say it's going to default to uh, monthly. Um, we'll say the pre-retirement rate of return is 7% uh, post as well, and then inflation is normally 2.9. Um, that's like the average value that I've seen. Now keep in mind the keys in local storage are gonna to correlate to the variable names that we're declaring uh, in this component. So now that we've created the variables for the initial values, now we want to plug into our useState hook 
to set the initial value uh, for our state variables um, to these initial value uh, to these initial values that we have just uh, set. So the way that the use state hook uh, works is it's a function. So use state is going to return two things. It's going to return the current state of, of whatever variable that we're declaring here, uh, and, and then it's going to return the function that updates that value. So for example. Uh, it's going to return the value of retirement age, and then it's going to return uh, a function um, to update retirement age. And, and this is the syntax for this uh, is described as set retirement age. Retirement is calculated, and then React knows that this is the associated uh, setter that we that we want. Um, and so we're going to set this equal to use state. We're going to call use state and pass it an initial value, and we've already created an initial value above. And this is the exact same pattern that we're gonna follow for the rest of these variables. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this. There's nothing special uh, for any of these variables. So it's just the same repetitive process. So I'll do that real quick. Okay, so now uh, we have all of the state variables declared using the use state hook. And now let's see how they, that these are actually incorporated into the form itself. Obviously, we would kind of intuitively know that if, if a user changes or provides an input to uh, a given field of the form, we want that to be saved to this state variable. Uh, and we want that to happen anytime the value in the form changes. Um, so the way that we do that is we can use the onChange event. So that way, anytime that the value changes in the form, uh, we can set our state variable to that new value. Okay, so we're gonna incorporate the onChange event for each of our form inputs, so that way we can set our state variables whenever the user changes the input, uh, any input of the form. <clears throat> so let's start here from the top. Now, this isn't part of the form, but we, we can now set the target retirement amount um, to the value of our state variable that we declared above. So let's go ahead and incorporate that here while we can. Um, so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna say, um, you can retire at age, and then we're gonna say retirement age. Use the variable that we declared. That should give us a value. Oh, that's retirement amount, whoops. So we are going to do retirement age here. Okay, so you can see that our retirement age now is 100, which is the default value that we set for it. Um, and then we can also go ahead and include the value for our target retirement amount. So we already set that uh, as a default here um, to zero. Um, and then now let's get to the actual inputs. Um, so first of all, on each of these inputs, let's start with annual retirement expenses. Uh, the type is number, and now we can actually give it a value because we declared initial values already. So the value is going to be here, uh, our annual retirement expenses. And then whenever uh, this value changes, we want to set our state variable to the new value that the user has input. And so the way that we do that is we're just gonna say uh, on change. So on change is going to, uh, we're basically going to use a function here. So it's gonna accept the actual event that it occurred. And then it's gonna take the value of, of the new, the field that changed. Um, and it's going to use our setter to set our state variable to that value. So the way that this is gonna look is uh, we're going to say set annual retirement expenses um, and we are going to set that to e.target.value. Okay, but there's something tricky here. Um, e.target.value is going to return a string and that's a problem because we're gonna use this to do calculations. So uh, you can run into very tricky bugs, or at least I did when I, when I forgot to, to parse this as a number, uh, all my calculations were getting messed up. So the way that I fix that is I just wrap this in parse int, that way it converts a string <coughs> to an integer. And uh, also, if there is no value here, it can return an empty string from local storage. Like let's say that we just hit delete on the input field um, to the point where there is no value. Um, an empty string could also cause us some issues in our calculation. It could uh, become something like not a number. When you're parsing an empty string as an int here, it can return in a, uh, not a number, which when you try to do calculations, it will create some inaccuracies. So the way that I get around this is I will either say, let's parse the value from the event, or 
uh, if there isn't any, because the empty string will be falsy here, we'll set this to zero. This helps you get around some of the trickier bugs that you might encounter. So we have that on uh, annual retirement expenses. Um, and then let's go ahead and do that for our other fields here. So for current age, it's gonna be the same deal here. We're gonna say uh, value equals current age. Uh, then we're gonna say um, on change. And I'm just going to uh, steal this here because it's going to be the same deal. And instead of annual retirement expenses, it's just going to be current age. We want our default here. We'll just, we'll assume that this is zero if the user deletes the value in the current age field, it's going to default to zero. So let me show you what that looks like. So um, if we're at current age 35 and I hit delete, it's going to go to zero. Um, and that way we won't get that empty string, um, but we can change it right back. Uh, and as you can see here, you know, we're able to actually like enter values um, and these are being stored in the, the state variables that we declared. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out. This is the same deal with these other values. So I'm basically just gonna copy and paste and finish this process. So now that I've uh, defined all the on-change uh, event handlers that we wanna use for any time these, these input fields change, um, let's go ahead and uh, see what happens. You know, we can, we can adjust the values here. Uh, nothing's happening because we haven't defined our calculation yet. So let's say we, you know, the user inputs custom values for everything. They take time to kind of change all the fields based off their circumstances. But then we refresh and all of them just get reset back to normal. Uh, that's really annoying. So how are we gonna handle this? Well, this is where we're gonna take advantage of local storage. Right now, all we've done is we've defined a way to get values from local storage, but we, we haven't yet set local storage. Um, and so in order to do that, uh, we're gonna use now the use effect hook in React. The use effect hook enables you to perform certain side effects after React uh, renders. So every time that the DOM re-renders, every time one of, the, one of these fields change by default, we can use the use effect hook to perform certain actions upon re-render and upon the change of those values. So to do this, we're gonna call the use effect function here and we are going to pass it a callback to perform certain things every time a re-render occurs. So every time one of the values in our form changes, we wanna make sure that the value in local storage is consistent in, uh, with the, that new updated value. So every, it makes sense that every time the value changes, we cause a re-render, we want the local storage to be updated. Um, and so to do that, we'll just say local storage dot set item and then we'll set it by the key. Same deals, basically we did with the get item, but this, in this case, it's set item. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this out for the rest of them. I've set all of our state variables that we wanna set. And as an optimization, uh, if you don't want use effect to, to be called every single re-render for whatever reason, maybe other things can cause the DOM to re-render and we don't wanna perform use effect every time for performance reasons, we can just specify, okay, only run use effect if the following values change. And we list those in an array here. Um, so in this case, I want to list everything that uh, a user can change in the form. Because um, that's what we want to uh, use to determine uh, whether or not to update local storage and then whether or not to perform calculations for retirement and the retirement age. So those are going to be the annual retirement expense, current age, current savings, contributions, contribution frequency, pre-retirement rate of return, post-retirement rate of return, uh, and then inflation. And if any of those things change, we want to run this use effect. Okay, so, and then let's, let's just make sure that this works. So let's set our custom values again. Uh, annual, let's say five, 50,000. And then we'll say this is 15, just for the hell of it. 32, okay, and then if I refresh, they're all the same. Um, so good, they're persisting in local storage. Okay, so we haven't actually done any calculations yet. So that's kind of important for a calculator. Uh, so let's get started on that. Um, so the retirement age is going to depend on 
how much you need to retire, which is the target retirement amount. So why don't we start with that? Why don't we start with the target retirement amount? So how do we calculate the target retirement amount? Well, I'm gonna do a very simple calculation here. I, you can get very advanced into you know, financial formulas and uh, find more precise numbers, but for the sake of this, I think it's, it's useful to just do kind of a, a simple ballpark approach. So if you wanna achieve financial independence, it's often defined as when the returns on your investments uh, equal or exceed the amount of annual expenses that you have in retirement. So basically all your investments return, your investment returns cover your expenses without having you, without you having to earn additional income. So if we say here that your annual retirement expenses uh, should be less than or equal to uh, your target retirement amount times uh, the net rate of return, so how much you're earning on your investments, less inflation. So then here we can basically just back into the target retirement amount. So we can say target retirement amount is going to be uh, greater than uh, or equal to the uh, annual retirement expenses divided by the net rate of return. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and, divide, and, and define the net rate of return. So we'll just say net post retirement rate of return because that's what we care about after we retire. Um, that's going to be equal to post-retirement rate of return minus inflation divided by 100. We don't want this to be zero because in our formula we're dividing by it and so you don't want to divide by zero. So let's just do a little hack here. We'll just say uh, net post-retirement if it's, uh, let's see, if it is zero, then we'll just set it to something really small like, uh, I don't know, zero, zero, one, like that. Okay, um, all right, and then, and then let's say, okay, what's our new target retirement amount? So we will just say, let's create a new variable to store this, uh, just something local here. Uh, updated target retirement amount equals annual retirement expenses divided by our net post-retirement uh, rate of return. Um, and then we will, let's make sure to use our setter to make sure that our, our, our variable is set. So we'll say set target retirement amount uh, updated target retirement amount. All right, so then that should give us the actual amount that we need to retire. So um, let's save this. Uh, let's actually give ourselves some annual retirement expenses. So let's say we wanted 80,000. Um, then with the rates of return that we have here, we'll need about 3.8 million. Um, now real quick, this is looking pretty ugly. Uh, it would probably be nice if it would probably be nice if we could format this like a currency. Um, turns out there is a pretty easy way to do that. So we can basically define a formatter function. Um, we can just say const formatter. Uh, there, we can use uh, this built-in formatter here, uh, number format, uh, if you pass it in US, and then uh, we'll just say style equals currency. Uh, we'll say uh, currency is US dollars, and then minimum fraction digits is going to be two. Um, and let's see, that works. Okay, so that's our formatter. And then we actually wanna use this. So the way that we use this formatter function is we'll go down to our target retirement amount and we will uh, pass this target retirement amount as an argument to the, the, to the formatter itself. So we'll just say, formatter.format, target retirement amount, save it, and voila, looks great. Okay, so that's a little, that's a little trick to, to format your currency. Okay, so that's useful. How much do we need to retire? Uh, but the whole point of this calculator is when can you retire? So based off of this, we can now calculate the retirement age that we need. So I'm gonna make a function for this. Um, I'm gonna call it calc uh, retirement age. So let's create this, const calc retirement age. Um, I'm gonna take in an argument for the updated target retirement amount. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a little bit. Um, and then we're gonna perform our calculation here. So uh, just for the sake of, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you why right now. So I ran into an issue um, at first, I wasn't taking any arguments into this function, and I was trying to use the state variable target retirement amount um, because 
I set it here so I figured I could use it, but it wasn't actually updating until the use effect finished. And so uh, when I try to use it in the calc retirement function that I'm, that I'm including in this use effect callback, uh, it, was it was using stale values and causing my calculations to be wrong. So instead, I'm just declaring a local variable that is up to date and I'm passing it to the function here. And so that's the reason why uh, I'm, I'm taking in that argument. In fact, here, uh, we're gonna save the result of this to a variable, retirement age, and then we're gonna make sure to not forget to set that um, because that's what, what's going to show up here. Uh, that's the value that we're using um, uh, to, that we're actually rendering. So we're gonna set retirement age to our calculation. And uh, I'll save that. Okay, um, that shouldn't have a value yet because we haven't done anything to calculate it. So let's, let's do the calculation. So the basic approach of this calculation, and there's, I'm sure there's uh, future value formulas that are nice and fancy that can back into the, to the age, but basically what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the current age that you're at, um, I'm going to do an annual compounding of your investments, um, including the contributions that you make, and whenever you're total current investment balance reaches this target retirement amount that we've already calculated, then I'm just going to return the age that you are when that occurs. So it's a pretty simple calculation, um, but it's gonna use the, the rate of return pre-retirement, obviously, because that's what we're gonna use to compound our investments. That's the rate of return we're gonna use. And so we're gonna use that value instead of post-retirement. So um, let's calculate that. We're gonna, because uh, we only have the, the just like the gross pre-retirement rate of return, not the net of inflation. So let's just do a simple calculation. We're gonna say Kant's net pre-retirement rate of return equals uh, the pre-retirement rate of return minus inflation divided by 100. Uh, and then let's set some va initial values here. So we're gonna set our current balance is gonna equal our current savings. Um, we're gonna say our annual contributions, um, if, our contribution frequency is annually, then we'll just leave it as is, contributions. Otherwise, we need to multiply it by 12, right? Because they're just, there's just one input for that, so we need to make sure that it uh, is set correctly. So um, otherwise, we're going to say just contributions times 12, okay? Uh, and then after that, uh, let's just say let retirement age equal, it's gonna start at current age, and then we're going to adjust it each year that we compound our investments. Um, okay, so we have a starting point here, and then the calculation is gonna be a simple while loop here. So I'm just gonna say while the current balance is less than the updated target retirement amount uh, that we accepted as an argument, we are going to set the current balance equal to the annual contributions plus the current balance times one plus net pre-retirement rate of return. So if our net pre-retirement rate of return is uh, you know, three, or, or let's say four, if you have 7% minus 3% inflation, so you have four, you want to, it, this is just saying, we're gonna multiply our current balance by 1.04 to increase it by 4%, and then add our annual contributions. Um, so that's our current balance. And so that's going to actually like compound each year. Um, and then we're gonna increment our retirement age because each year that we compound our investments, we wanna make sure we're keeping track of our age. And then this is a little something here. Um, if this gets out of hand, there's no situation where we, we wanna depress people and have them retiring over the age of 200 if life extension happens. So we're just gonna break if retirement age gets too crazy. Um, and then as a function, finally, we're gonna return uh, the retirement age. So we have our calculation for our retirement age, and as you can see here, uh, it's already calculating something. So it's saying 38. If we're going uh, 50,000 a month, that would make sense. Um, let's say we're 32, let's do something more reasonable. Regular contributions are 1,500 monthly. All right, now we see this is starting to become a more reasonable number. Pre-retirement, let's say seven. Uh, let's say six, if you get a little more conservative, 
Okay, so now we're getting a number. So now we have our calculation for, for FIRE, for financial independence. Um, and now we can do a few optimizations and we can start with styling. Um, 